In this lecture, we'll be talking about tuples. So a tuple is a Python sequence, which we already know that it is used to store a group of elements, same like list. Tuples are similar to list, but the main difference is tuples are immutable. Whereas if I talk about list, they are ordered as well as mutable, but tuples are ordered, but they are immutable. So we can modify elements of list whenever we want. And since tuple is immutable, so we cannot perform operations like append, insert, remove, pop, clear with tuple. That means we cannot insert elements inside tuple, we cannot remove elements, we cannot pop elements, and also we cannot delete elements of tuple. So that's the major difference between tuples and list. The main thing that you need to remember is they are ordered. Let's start our lecture. So remaining thing you will be following during our examples. By now you already know how to create a tuple. So let me take a variable a and in which I will be giving four five values. And remember you can pass any type of element. You can pass string, you can pass integer, you can pass float. Uh, let us take a basic example and just pass few numbers. Here I have declared my tuple and if I print it, you can see I got all the elements. And if I try to use indexing over my tuple, so if I take zero position, I will be getting an answer of 10. The next thing I want to talk about is if I give a index position which not exist. So here if I pass 30, you see I got an error that it is index error and the tuple index is out of range. So remember this is an important point and what if, if I try to insert a new element at a certain position here if I take zeroth position and if I pass an element as 50 and you will get a type error that tuple object does not support item assignment. So we cannot assign items to our tuple but we can do a lot more thing. We can try out different methods that are available for tuple but remember we cannot remove, we cannot append, we cannot clear and lot more thing. Let me use some methods that would be helpful for us. So if I use a count method and pass 10, that means number of time 10 is available in our tuple. So if I print enter, you can see I got a result of 1. Let me create a new tuple. Now this is a multi value tuple in which I am passing integer, string, float as well as a list. Now if I try to count the value of 10 now inside B tuple, you can see now I'm getting a result of 2. Now let's play with other function. What if I need to get the length of our tuple? That simple just use alien function. And what if I need to concatenate two tuples? I have currently A, I have B. What if I need to concatenate them? Since you know I cannot add new content in a single tuple but what if I create a new tuple maybe C and then try to concatenate element of A and element of B to create a new tuple. So that's how I can do that. That means if I need to add two elements inside my A tuple maybe 10 and 20 and then I want to add 30 and 40 but since tuple is immutable I cannot add them. So what I did is all the new elements that I want to add in my A tuple, I just added them inside my B. So that is 30 and 40. Now what I did is I concatenated them and now I have C. Now the next thing I can do is I can just assign the value of C to my A. So my A will have all the new values. You see that's how I can add new values to my tuple. But this is not the way that we have done with the list. With the list, we can do that with a single command. Since tuple is immutable, this is just the other way around. Remember tuples usually carry the data which should not be edited throughout the program or throughout the run. That is why they are immutable. The next thing I want to talk about is comma. So here if I create a new tuple, maybe p and add an element as hello. Now you will see whenever you find a single tuple, you might see a comma. Maybe you start working on some project, you will surf website like Stack Overflow, you will surf website like GitHub. And whenever you see a source code, which has only a single element in a tuple, 
you will find this comma. Don't worry, it's a conventional way to tell people that this is a tuple and this comma doesn't affect your code. If you want to add a second element, you can do that. And you can also add a comma again. But for one element, people usually write a single comma just to show that it's a tuple. Otherwise, it is hard to understand if this is a tuple or people are trying to pass some values in a function or anything else. So this comma help us to define a tuple for single element. Now, what if I try to multiply this by five? If I print my result, what you are going to expect? It will print five times this tuple or one single tuple with five time hello. Let me print that. You see a single tuple with five time as hello. Now there are some functions which are available in our tuple. So all these function and all these methods are used to perform important operations on our tuple. So if I perform max on my a tuple, you can see my a tuple was 10, 20, 30 and 40. I got the highest that is 40. And if I try to use min, you can see I got my a. You can also delete your tuple with the help of del function. After deleting, if I try to access my tuple, you can see I got a name error that this name a is not defined. So now this variable does not exist and there is no memory that is allocated for our variable a. That's all for this lecture. Hope this lecture was helpful. In the next lecture, let us talk about dictionaries, which are really, really, really important. So see you in the next lecture.